All right, so introduction to assignment 10, your final art project. It's called a conceptual art project. Conceptual art is dictated on the idea more than on the materials. So, art which, in which the idea presented by the artist is considered more important than the finished product, right? So, what we are trying to do is create a work of art that communicates your idea. And one of my favorites is Joseph Kusis' chair piece from the late 60s. All this piece is about is communicating chair. <laughs> it's, called, it's called chair. So what does he do? He has a life-size photograph, the highest quality photograph he could get in the late 60s. Um, the chair itself, and then the different dictionary definition of a chair, all in a museum or all in a gallery, right? And it's to show you that just this really simple idea of chair, you can think about in several different ways, can be communicated several different ways. So that's conceptual art at kind of its purest, or Yoko Ono's poems, where you know, breathe into your hands, let it go, call it breath, things like that. It's about the idea. So when I say that this is a conceptual project, it's to encourage you guys to have an idea and to use the artwork you create digitally to communicate that idea. And that is a tough thing to assign in a class structure, right? It's an even harder thing to grade. So this is how I present it. Your final art project <coughs> has to react to something that I give you. So the whole class is reacting to something that they are assigned. But the way in which you use that thing you're reacting to to inspire an idea is completely individual. So you can think of it like I'm giving you a little irritant, a little grain of sand, right? And you guys are going to create the pearls, the layers of meaning around it. So that by the end of it, it's not so important what that grain of sand is that all of you are responding to. It's what it led you to create. And that's the concept. So you can look at the assignment sheet. It's just one page. The difference between this project, and I do call it an illustration project, because illustrations, unlike fine art, are made um, to bring light to something else. That's what illustration means. It comes from illumination. And the first illuminations that we use that term for were in medieval texts. And if you had the, the Bible written out or the Gospels written out by monks in 800 in Europe, you would have uh, illuminators that would do the paintings at the beginning of each Gospel, right? And those illuminators are trying to bring light to illuminate the text to help you understand the ideas behind these Latin words that people couldn't read, but they could see the pictures and get the meaning from that, right? So illustration comes from that. Why, why don't we use the term illumination anymore? Well, illuminations were hand-painted, right? Illustrations mean that they are made to be reproduced. Digital art, you can call it a fine art form all you like. It can be used for fine art. It can make one-of-a-kind objects but it is the ideal discipline for things made to be reproduced because digital makes perfect copies of itself. So this project, you are trying to bring light to the thing, bring light to your idea, which originated by being inspired by the thing I gave you. And the thing I gave you for this assignment is not a phrase or a sentence taken out of context. That's often what I'll do. But for this semester, you guys had some choice in this. For this semester, I gave you a song, and it's by a San Antonio band. It's an unreleased track, so you're not going to be able to find anything image-related on it. You're not going to be swayed by any album artwork or by any, you know, other stuff, even by any typeface ch choice or, or whatever. So listen to the track. It has lyrics. Um, you can decide to just focus on the words or even just a fragment of the words and make your piece based on that. You can decide to just take the overall feeling of the song and try to interpret that mood. 
you can use it as a way of reminding you of something else that, that you want to react to. But the important thing is that you're all coming up with original personal ideas that in some way originate with this inspiration. And because of that, the whole show we have on our last class day will be a thematic show. This is very much what like an art curator would do. So this will be the show of this song. And it's how all of you different artists interpreted it. Okay. It does say that you can use any materials that you like, as long as the project can physically fit in the class and also be uploaded to PhotoBucket digitally. So it needs to be able to exist digitally. And you need to use digital art techniques, but you are not limited to those. So for this project, you can draw by hand, scan, and then manipu manipulate what you did by hand digitally, right? You can take your own photographs, composite with those. You can scan different textures, you know, composite. You can work a lot of different ways. So I really don't want to limit the way you work. Remember, we've covered compositing. We've covered um, digital painting, we've covered digital color, we've covered vector line work, we've covered using type, we've covered things like texture overlays. A lot of those, we've covered GIF animation, a lot of those things can be integrated into, into a vision. But it all probably, for me, would start in a sketchbook, would start by researching and getting your idea started. So the tips are very important here. Because it's going to be graded by a full class critique, it's really important that first and foremost, you like this project and that you like the product you get out of it. It's your single best opportunity to really create a portfolio piece to showcase what you've learned about digital art. It's a great opportunity to create a piece that will go into shows, go into the student show, you know, represent your skills. And you get to choose what it shows and what techniques it, it showcases. In full class critique, we've practiced this the midterm. That full class critique is broken up into four elements. So people are going to be looking at it, looking for the quality of your idea. Right? They're going to be looking at it and looking at how well you execute that idea. So how well that idea comes through in the actual artwork. They're going to be looking to see how much effort you put into it. And effort goes into to having a good idea. And they're going to be looking at it in terms of its pizzazz, right? That's the one point out of 10. Whether it stands out and makes you want to look at it and really grabs your attention uh, more than the, the pieces around it. So in order to make sure that your idea is clear, you are not just going to make an art piece. You are also going to write and turn in a one-page description of your artwork and your intentions for your artwork. So this is what's called an artist statement. It should not be more than one page. And all you need for it, you need your name, you need the title of your piece, and then you need to explain how it relates to the song. Like where your idea came from and how you chose to, to develop it. Once we have that, then we know how to judge your piece, <laughs> right? And we can tell if you actually communicated that idea clearly or not. Now, an artist statement is not something you need to fully write before you start your project. It's something that you develop along with your project. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. You can look in PhotoBucket and see past examples of artist statements and past examples of projects, but they're not going to be that helpful to you because they're incredibly diverse. And every semester I have students react to something totally different. So what's difficult about this project is you don't have any examples to lean on, right? Because I don't want you to just make something that's derivative of someone else's approach. So instead, what I'll, I'll share with you are my approaches to coming up with concepts. And this is the first phase, the concept phase. So I uh, was given a project recently. I was invited to participate in a show called Common Currents which celebrates the tricentennial, the 300th birthday of the city of San Antonio. And so this was one of the little emails I got. Basically, they, they want um, artists to 
illustrate one year. And so we each got assigned a year randomly. And it's going to be exhibited at Blue Star Contemporary Art Gallery. I have to turn it in at the beginning of, of January. And that's basically it. That's all they're giving me. They give me a year and they tell me that this is going to be going on, you know, throughout institutions in San Antonio over 2018, which is the 300th anniversary and all this stuff, right? So basically I'm given a little grain of sand. The year I was given was 1789. No, I'm sorry, 1769. That's so much cooler. So 1769 and then in the life of San Antonio. So most research nowadays starts with a Google search, right? If you look up 1769 San Antonio, you get addresses. <laughs> and honestly, there isn't a lot of note that happened in 1769 in San Antonio. And the most, um, the most common thing was something that happened in, in um, California with, with a mission and a ship called the San Antonio. You know, so research is always how you can kind of begin. So if you are responding to a song, what do you want to do first? Listen to the song and then immediately write down impressions, right? So here's my idea, what's called an ideation phase. I'll just get out my sketchbook. I'll do it digitally here. And I'll try to define the problem. I kind of try to approach it a little bit like a designer when I'm trying to come up with an idea because I'm trying to find a, a solution to a problem, but I have to give myself the problem first. So I write something like 1769 San Antonio. Okay, then I do some free association. What do I already know about 1769 in San Antonio? I know it's, it's going to talk about the city's history. It's going to talk about um, merging of cultures. The San Antonio is one of those, those places where a lot of different nationalities and ethnicities and cultural traditions kind of fought for dominance, the whole Six Flags thing. What else do I know about it? I know about um, the indigenous people that were displaced by the nomadic Comanche tribes that rode Spanish horses and kind of terrorized all of the indigenous natives and that's one of the reasons why the missions of San Antonio were able to be successful because they provided protection from these horse riding Comanches, right? And it's not like the Comanches were naturally horse riders. They were horse riders because of the, the Spanish conquistadors bringing horses and forcing them out of their, their permanent settlements, you know, further east. So there's lots to, to deal with, right? What, what do I know about San Antonio? You know, I know it's a very um, democratic and accessible art scene. So you want to think of your audience. And this audience is for people that go to art galleries in San Antonio. <laughs> you know, people that go to the Blue Star Contemporary Art Center and see First Friday every month, that kind of thing. So you always want to kind of flatter your audience or at least speak to your audience clearly. Have a message for them. So this is the brainstorming. Next comes the research. And you'll be surprised just when you brainstorm and you just do free association, you'll find ways to approach it. So now my Google search will yield much better results if I actually look for 1769 year history, San Antonio, Comanche, let's see. And we look at um, historical markers like Comanche Lookout Park. And in 1772, a peace treaty was signed. And you, you read articles and you look at it, the Comanches,